A lot of y'all Cowboys fans, y'all don't get this. You have an elite defense. Nobody's denying that. What everybody is putting into question is your quarterback. What's good, Joe? What's good, Real Talk Squad? This is Miles, and you're listening to Real Talk with Miles Johnson, where you know I always keep it real. Let's get right into it, man. All right, I'm going to give you my reaction. A couple of days late, I'm going to give you my reaction to the Cowboys' recent success. Now, if you haven't watched Real Talk before, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all that jazz. Show the channel some love. We're going to be consistent this NFL season. Now, look, I'm in New York right now. So not only did the Giants lose 40-0, to Daniel Jones sacked seven times, uh, fumbles, intercept. I mean, it, it, it was bad. Then on, on, the, on top of that, Aaron Rodgers doesn't even complete a pass for the New York Jets. And now he's out for the season. It's gloomy. In New York. Now, I'm an Eagles fan, as y'all see. As y'all see. But going to NYU, being at New York right now, I can feel. I can feel how sad this sports town is right now. A big part of that is the Cowboys. Now, was I surprised by what the Cowboys did? I was surprised. I did not think the Giants were going to be anything this year. The fact that you don't want to pay a guy in Saquon Barkley, what message does that send to your locker room? That's number one. Uh, Also think Daniel Jones is overrated. There's no way in hell, no way in hell that I'm going to ever give a guy like that who had 15 touchdowns, $40 million. That's how desperate. Giving Daniel Jones $40 million Shows how desperate the New York Giants are to get their franchise quarterback in the post-Eli Manning era. It's like, all right, well, we saw something. We saw something. Not something great. We saw something good from this guy. Here's the bag. Like, we, that, that's how desperate. Y'all are like the, the Browns, but worse because at least Deshaun Watson, you feel me, showed me some. In the past, he showed that he could be a top five quarterback, and they gave him the bag. What the heck has Daniel Jones shown in consecutive seasons to indicate that he's your franchise guy? It doesn't make any sense. So let's talk about the, the Cowboys, right? They were they were good. They were good. I mean, 4-0, I mean, they had Daniel Jones literally running for his life. Like, actually running for his life. Seven sacks for 47 yards, eight QBR. I mean, everybody was getting everybody was getting QB hits, whether it was Ose, Durant, Armstrong, Durant Bland, Micah Parsons. He's It's a good chance he'll probably be defensive player of the year, although I do have Miles Garrett. Um, Demarcus Lawrence was getting in there. Like, Everybody was getting theirs. Everybody was getting their licks, bro. Everybody, bro. Every single person, bro. And bringing in Stephon Gilmore makes that defense nice. The defense is elite. But here's what y'all don't get. A lot of y'all Cowboys fans, y'all don't get this. You have an elite defense. Nobody's denying that. What everybody is putting into question is your quarterback. Is your quarterback. Plain and simple. I don't care if the Cowboys beat the Giants by 200 points. What the hell is Dak Prescott going to do in January? That's what I want to know. Because he hasn't done nothing. His best games have been in his rookie year in the playoffs. Like, I don't care. I don't care how good the Cowboys are in the regular season. They got to show me something in the postseason and it's not me being biased as an Eagles fan it's simply facts you gotta show me what you're gonna do when the lights are the brightest for me to believe for me to believe and that's a 
pretty big problem when there are no questions about your roster except your quarterback and at times your head coach. That's the, the those are the worst worst positions, the worst things to ever have question marks on your franchise is your quarterback and your coach. And that's what the Cowboys have. So I don't care how good Micah Parsons is. I don't care how good C.D. Lamb is. I don't care how good Tony Pollard is. I don't care about this resurgence from Demarcus Lawrence. If you have question marks from your quarterback and your head coach, you're going to be in trouble. Facts. That's why the Eagles will always, will always, will always beat the Cowboys when it comes to that time. Because one thing you can never say about the Eagles is question marks about their quarterback. And let's keep it a bean. Questions marks about their coach. Your Nick Sirianni, he's, prone to, he's proved to be a great coach in this league. Let's call it what it is, bro. Let's call it what it is. So I'm not worried. I'm not worried. I'm interested to see what they do against elite competition, the Cowboys, because let's just face it, they're facing the Jets next week, and obviously you got Zach Wilson there. If they beat the 49ers on October 8th, now we're talking about something, and now I'll really start to I'll start to be, you know, I'll start to change a little bit. But I'm still, I don't care if these guys go 15 and 2, 16 and 1, heck, 17 and 0. For some reason, when postseason time comes around, the Cowboys fold. The Cowboys fold, bro. And let's just, I want to ask y'all this. Give me y'all thoughts in the comments, bro. Would you rather have Dak Prescott or Brock Purdy? I really want you to think about this, bro. Because let's just say you switched Dak Prescott with Brock Purdy on the 49ers. For me, that doesn't move the needle for the 49ers. It actually makes me think the 49ers are worse. Because Dak Prescott is prone to turn over the ball, which Brock Purdy doesn't. So when I come back to the question, who's better Brock Purdy or Dak Prescott, I would rather have Brock Purdy. I'll be honest, as an Eagles fan, I'm more scared of Brock Purdy than Dak Prescott because I know, well, shoot, Dak is going to help our defense out. He's going to help us out. He's going to end up getting us, you know, he's going to end up getting us a possession, extra possession here or there. Brock Purdy, he's not going to be flashy, but he's going to get the job done, keep the ball all that stuff, bro. So that's all I'm saying is like, bro, as of right now, I'm picking Brock Purdy over Dak Prescott. And nobody can ever tell me different, bro. Ever tell me different. Your track record speaks for itself. Your track record speaks for itself. So I'm not worried. I'm not worried about the Eagles. We, we, we was up against the best coach of all time and got out coached and we still won. Obviously, the uh, injury to Nakobe Dean, that's going to hurt us. But look, if he can just be healthy by week nine, if Nakobe can be healthy by week nine, we cool, bro. Because we can, we'll be straight by week nine. Week nine, that's when it gets real. That's when we play the Cowboys, we play the 49ers, we play uh, the Bills, even though, talk about Josh Allen. Don't ever tell me Josh Allen is better than Jalen Hurts ever again. I don't ever want to hear that, bro. Jalen Hurts does not turn over the ball at the rate that Josh Allen does. And just like Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, once he got a number one wide receiver in A.J. Brown, guess what? He didn't get to the conference championship like Josh Allen does. He got to the freaking Super Bowl, bro. First year getting number one wide receiver. How many years has Josh Allen had Stephon Diggs? How many years has Josh Allen had failed playoff runs? He's simply not as good as Jalen Hurts. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Cry. Cry. 
I don't care. Cry. So, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all that jazz. That's my take. Brock Purdy is better than Dak Prescott. Jalen Hurts is far better than Josh Allen. And I simply won't believe in the Dallas Cowboys until they show me something in the postseason. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all that jazz. With that being said, y'all, it is Real Talk Miles Johnson, where you know I always keep it real. I'm out, y'all.